when you pray for America, make sure you're praying for America. Because you see, it isn't always about what you want to be done, but it is about what God has done in America. God shed His grace on thee. That's probably the best prayer you could ask God to do. Because America has always been about, give me your tired, your poor, give me your needy, give me the unregistered aliens, give me the green card holders, give me those who have come to the land that God has blessed and God has shed His grace upon because God wants to do something in the life of that person. God wants them to come to America. Even as we used to sing, they're coming to America today. And it's not about freedom and to become who you want to be, but it's where the place that God shed His grace on thee. Because without God shedding His grace, freedom would just be enslavement to another government system that we have. And so, in America, you'll find that there's all ethnicities together in what we call the, the melting pot that America is. Not because God creates one nation that has so inspired him to become more than what they are, but rather because he shed his grace upon it. We pray that God would allow us to continue to be that nation he could shed his grace upon it, so that all nations could come to this nation and become one with God, to become one nation under God, to become one people that is called America. And that way we would not be Latino or Blacks or Whites or Chicano or Jewish or Gentile, or that we would be male or female, but we could call to the unity of the body of believers that we are as Christians and that we could say to God, please help us to live the life that you've given us as you've shed your grace upon us, that people would be drawn to that culture that we have in us, not the culture that we build around us, that they would see in us something different, that you've shed your grace and mercy upon, that our lives might be a reflection of the America that we want to portray as God directed us to do today. And so, we pray not according to the will of our own when we try to make America into redneck or blue blood or ethnic or non-ethnic or into government controlled or people controlled or we the people or God blessed or God directed. But rather we say, God help us. God give your grace once again to us. God take us from our own will to thy will be done. For whatsoever God chooses for America to be, that we will become, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, America has always been all the nations flocking, flowing, and coming to this land where, yes, we are free to choose much of what we can do, but there are also laws that come with liberty. There's also responsibility that comes with ethnicity. There's also that grace that God has given us in order to learn who it is that extends the grace to us. That His mercy might be made known to us because of the things we have done, we have reaped and sown. And so in prayer, we ask that God would heal our land because it is a great land that He's given us. And this great land that He has from sea to shining sea was not meant to be just liberty so that we could do whatever we choose to do that's pleasing in our own sight but that we would humbly bow down and recognize who it is who has given us this land, who has prospered us in our way, who has caused us to live in panel homes and be rich beyond our means and nature that we have ever known of any other nation to have such wealth for all of its citizens. Because even the poorest in America is prosperous compared to those of the world. So let us this day choose to pray for God's grace let us ask God to take place of our will with His will. Let us choose to acknowledge that the Lord our God still is the God that we've chosen to acknowledge as the one who has shed His grace upon America. Because God could turn His face to any other nation in the world, and He shall soon do that to Israel. And Israel will reject Him, and Israel will turn their back on Him. And then God will send his prophets to them to prophesy against Israel. And Israel will turn their backs on them. And God 
will see that Israel will make a pact with the false Messiah, the Antichrist, and then God will reveal himself to Israel. But until that time, God has shed his grace upon us. Let us ask God to turn again his face towards us, to shine his light upon our land and to have mercy upon us as we take a stand not to exercise our will, but rather to acknowledge his will to be done. Not that we should choose to vote or to have the frustrations of the political system, but that God would give us the peace, the love, and the joy that we can exist in, in America. Because it's not a post-9-11 America. That's no such thing as a post-9-11. There is such a thing as God shed his grace on thee. And that's what America has been all along. From the moment that any person, whether it be the Vikings or the natives that were here, that put their foot upon this land, God shed his grace on thee. And that's why we pray, once again, not for the Christian, not for the illegal alien or the alien, because we are all aliens passing through this land. But we pray that God would have mercy, that God would hear us, that we as humbly acknowledging that there is someone greater than us, our Creator, that He would shed His grace upon us once again. God shed His grace on me. And I pray that God would shed His grace upon you, because you need it. Whether you're a Christian or not, you need His grace in this land to live. You need His grace in this life to be the person God wants you to be. So I pray that whether you know Him or don't, whether you're a Christian or not, whether you exist for your own selfish desires or whether you have laid down your life in order to follow Jesus, I pray this day that God would shed His grace on thee.